Hi, my name is Boris. You might remember me from such videos as finding the area in normal to a parallelogram and proving the complex conjugate root theorem. Today, we're going to look at the following problem. We were asked to find the fifth roots of this complex number, 16 minus 16i root 3. And I remind you that although it doesn't say this, but if we're finding the fifth roots, if we're going to find all of them, there's five of them. Okay? And in mathematics, well, if we write this question mathematically, what we're asked to do is really solve this equation. z to the 5 minus 16i root 3. This is the equation we need to solve. And there are several steps to doing it. The first step is to convert this complex number into polar form. And in order to do this, we should always draw a diagram. If we don't draw a diagram, we might get the modulus wrong, or more likely, we might get the argument wrong. So a diagram always helps. So where does this complex number sit? Well, it sits somewhere over here, where the real part is 16, and the imaginary part is minus 16 root 3, so it's below the real axis. So this is 16 root 3. Okay, and now if we use some trigonometry, we'll see that this angle there is pi on 3, and this distance there is 32. So that means we can now write this complex number in polar form. Its modulus is 32, and its argument is minus pi on 3. And in order to do this question, what we also need to do is allow non-principal arguments, at least for now. And so we're going to add 2k pi i. Because I remind you that if you add 2k pi i to an argument of any complex number, you don't actually change the complex number. It's just it's not going to be a principal argument anymore. So if we simplify this a little bit, we get z to the 5 equals 32 e to the power of 6k minus 1 pi i divided by 3. So we need to solve the following equation. And generally speaking, whenever we solve equations, we have two choices. Either we let z equal to x plus i y, and then we try to find the x and the y, or we let z equal to r times e to the i theta, and then we need to find the r, and we need to find the theta. Because the right-hand side is in polar form, we're going to use the second option. So we're going to say let z equal r e to the i theta, and our goal is to find the r and to find the theta. Once we've done that, we've found z. Okay, so we substitute it in, and we get r e to the i theta to the power of 5 is 32 e 6k minus 1 pi i on 3. We use Demois' theorem to simplify this. We get r to the 5 e to the 5 i theta equals 32 e 6k minus 1 pi i on 3. And now we equate the moduluses of these two complex numbers. So 35, oh, sorry. We equate the moduluses of these two complex numbers. So r to the 5 equals 32. And we equate the arguments of these complex numbers. So 5i theta should equal to 6k minus 1 pi i divided by 3. So r to the 5 equals 32. And r is the modulus of a complex number. So in particular, it's a real number. This is not a complex number. So in real numbers, this equation only has one solution, and that's 2. So r is 2. Here, we also have 5 theta is 6k minus 1 times pi divided by 3. And if we divide by 5, we get 6k minus 1 pi over 15. And any value of k that you substitute in will give you a solution to this equation. But there's only five unique values of k which will give you different solutions. All the other values of k will get you a solution that's equal to one of the other ones. The only difference being is that five values of k will give you a principal argument, so an argument between minus pi and pi, and the other values of k are going to give you a non-principal argument. 
and then you'll have to do more work to convert your problem or to convert your answer to a principal argument. But if we're careful and we choose five values of k correctly straight away, we won't have to do any more work. And usually the values of k that you need to choose are the ones that are evenly balanced around zero. So in this particular case, we're going to let k equal minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. I'm using the fact that I know that this equation has five roots. Okay, if I didn't know this, I could try substituting in more values. I could keep going here, maybe try three, and then you will see that substituting in three will give me the same complex number as substituting in minus two. Okay, let's substitute these values of k in over here. I'll just wipe this board and come back. Okay, and we're back. Okay, so now we're gonna substitute in these five different values of k into here to give us five different values for theta. So the five different arguments corresponding to z that we're looking for. Okay, so if we substitute in minus 2, we will get minus 13 on 15 pi. If I substitute in minus 1, I will get minus 7 on 15 pi. If I substitute in 0, I get minus 1 on 15 pi. If I substitute in 1, I will get 5 pi on 15 which is also just one third pi. And if I substitute in two, I will get 11 on 15 pi. And you can see that all of these numbers here are between minus pi and pi. So they're indeed all principal arguments and we don't need to do any more work. By that I mean we don't need to subtract two pi or add two pi to any of these to get a principal argument. So we're almost done. Now it's just time to write down the answer. So the five answers are, they all have modulus 2. So it's 2e to the minus 13 on 15 pi i, 2 to the e minus 7 pi on 15 i, 2 to the e pi on 3 i, and I forgot one, this one, 2e minus pi on 15 i and 2 e 11 pi on 15 i. Okay, so these are the five answers to this equation. And as you can see, the complex numbers, the answers to this question, they're all evenly spaced out. And the angle between every answer is equal to precisely 6 pi on 15 or 2 pi on 5. Also notice that the answers that we got are not complex conjugates of one another, which may contradict, or you might think it contradicts, my previous video where I proved that given a complex number alpha, its conjugate is also a root of the equation. And this is not happening here. Why not? Well, the thing that's going wrong is that the, we're not solving an equation with real coefficients. In particular, in this case, 16 minus 16 i root 3 is not a real number. And as I said in that video, if the coefficients are not real, then the theorem is actually false. So this is why the answers we're getting are not complex conjugates of one another.